Steve Geller along with Bobby Aber, Mike to tell you after another Saints training camp practice. We were inside to start the day, but ended up in the outdoors. Uh, some of the fans in attendance getting to to see the uh, the action. But gentlemen, a big talk after practice being the fact that this team. Um, may be considering moving to a different location for training camp next season because of some of the renovations that are going on here. Really nothing to do with the heat from what I gathered, at least. It's more the fact that there's going to be construction going on here and the team might have to be forced to find something somewhere else to work out. Well, uh, as long as you go in a different environment, uh, you don't go back to Jackson, Mississippi, and, and, and Millsaps or Southeastern Hammond. No, you got to go where it's truly... You're not dealing uh, with the heat. I mean, look, the Browns were just uh, at the Greenbrier and the setup they have there. Uh, I mean, ever since the Saints really started that at the Greenbrier, they've had different NFL teams. I want to say the Texans were even there. Definitely remember uh, them. Yeah, yeah, one time. Washington. So, yeah, right. even so, uh, either there or I still say uh, not. They don't have the facilities like at the Greenbrier, but as far as the weather, Lacrosse, Wisconsin was awesome. The Saints went there nine seasons in a row but you got to win you know if you win then you keep going back and I think that was kind of negativity uh, with the green bars like you're seven and nine or it ain't helping so yeah bottom line if you change the environment you got to win or people uh, you know obviously they can look at that that's the reason why maybe you didn't have success team in shells today gentlemen but there's still a good amount of work that happened on the field a lot of throws to the tight end we saw look what is it four straight to Taysom Hill three straight to Jimmy Graham all completion so again it's just sort of a peak repeat but this team's emphasis in getting the football out in the flat to the tight ends is obvious also Foster Morrow with a couple catches also so again that is part of the repertoire with Derek Carr he's going to want to go to the tight end and what they they did instead of the previous day they were doing like two minute offense for the half well this was two minute offense to end the game they had one timeout uh, did a scenario um, and they just had to get a field goal to win and Will Lutz came through all of his kicks I want to say he was like six for six somewhere around there. He didn't miss a kick and hey, it could come down to, like I said, week one against the Titans, whatever. You make the kick, you win. You don't make the kick, you don't win. I, I think that's the difference you could look at. I'm not a handful, at least two or three games uh, could be all the difference in the world, whether you win or lose. We know what happened in England. I mean, the double doink. Uh, I don't know if we don't want, but they're sitting in overtime, if I can remember uh, at that time. So no, that you need Lutz to be in those pressure situations and to come uh, through and uh, looking at um, Derek Carr, I think this game is important for him when he's when he's in there, simply because it's a new team. And uh, you always want to get off uh, to a great start, uh, first impressions, even though the game doesn't count. So uh, I'm, I'm looking for you know Derek Carr to really look forward uh, to being a new uniform and, and take advantage of the opportunity and, and w wanting to get off to a fast start. One of the things, too, today, Dennis Allen brought it up about Malcolm Roach. And a little tidbit to that, this offseason, Malcolm worked with old buddy Pete Jenkins out in Dallas. And Pete got him working with Henry Thomas. Henry has more quarterback sacks than any other nose tackle in the history of the National Football League. And Dennis talked today about his pass rush skills and that he can play on the nose. He can also play in that 4-3 defensive tackle position, his versatility, but how quick he is off the snap. That's a lot having to work with Pete Jenkins, Henry Thomas. You know, and um, looking at uh, yeah, hello. what Jeff was saying um, about Breezy, you know, uh, a lot of fans are going to look at him. Okay, I don't know how many snaps he's going to play, but first impressions with him because you're not familiar. And, and, boy, if he can do that in a real game, and uh, Jeff was commenting how, you know, great penetration and how quick he was off the ball, almost like taking the handoff. Uh, to be to be that explosive, that would that would catch everyone's attention. You do that uh, maybe a couple of snaps, and you'd be disruptive against the Chiefs. Uh, looking at that, and then uh, talking with Jeff, also watch out for uh, Lonnie Johnson Jr. Yeah, he definitely looks the part. He's six two two ten. He's the fifth year veteran, and uh, Jeff and I was talking about this. He's kind of like almost the new PJ Williams for this team. You know what I mean? They're gonna ask him to do. Um, and he's a veteran, so that's just a couple of players, like young one, a veteran one, that um, 
to see maybe what kind of impact they can have against the Chiefs come Sunday. Because really he's moved now from corner to safety. Right. But he's played both the nickel and also in the dime set. So he's experienced in there. And I think that's a big plus. Also his size. He's no little guy oh, like P.J. Williams. Yeah, yeah, he's a yeah. big, tall yeah, guy. Two, two, then, no, he, he's, he, he looks the part. Now he just got to play the part. So. Two more into tonight's Sports Talk 4-8. to eight. I will be talking to Saints color analyst Deuce McAllister, 4-30. Uh, plus, get into our one-on-one -on -one interview with wide receiver Keith Kirkwood as well when we get into the Saints training camp sound bank. Uh, I'm Steve Geller, Mike Dettelia, along with Bobby Hebert. Hear us on WWLAMFM.com and the Odyssey app. Who that? Go Saints. Who that?